Hi, my name is Dr. Aldewan Tart, Christian clinical psychologist, and I have a message for you if you struggle with inadequacy. And what I mean by that is you have this bigger than life dream, but something inside of you won't let you pursue it. You talk yourself out of it. You talk about what you don't have, the degrees you don't have, what you can't do, the money you don't have saved. If that's you, I have a message for you. And I want to help uh, help you to get over that by telling you this story about a movie, A Trip to the House of Hope, my trip to CVS yesterday, and A Thief. All right. Do you remember this movie called The Adjustment Bureau? It was starring Matt Damon, Anthony Mackie, and Emily Blunt. And the theme of the movie was these people with hats control people's destiny. And in this movie, they control Matt Damon's destiny. So if he made a move that was out of alignment with what his true calling was, to the way they saw it, they would make these adjustments, hence the Adjustment Bureau, to make sure that he didn't miss his destiny. And thinking about that movie, I, I, it, it made me think about my recent trip to the House of Hope, where I had the pleasure of seeing E. Dewey Smith preach about Moses. And it got me to thinking about um, Moses' experience at the burning bush. So uh, Pastor Smith talked about Exodus, the third book of Exodus, where Moses comes to the burning bush and God tells him, he says, Moses, I want you to lead the people out of Israel into Egypt. And if you recall, in Moses 3.11, uh, Moses doesn't accept the calling right away. He says, uh, but, but Moses protested to God, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people out of Egypt? And so you question, why would Moses question himself? Well, let's look at his background. Because I know a lot of times we question whether we can do things based on things that have happened in our past or things that we have not done. We feel inadequate. So remember, Moses was born under strife. First few minutes of his life, King Ramses ordered all Hebrew baby boys to be drowned. So just to keep Moses alive, he had to be placed in his basket and positioned when the Pharaoh's daughter was walking so that she could find him. And so she raised Moses. So he, he, he left his, his land and was raised by the Pharaoh's daughter. Now, the cold thing about that story is that his sister came up to the Pharaoh's daughter was like, do you want a maid to help raise him? And the maid was actually Moses' mother. But that's, that's cold. That's a whole nother, whole nother scripture. That's just awesome the way she thought on her feet. So Moses was born in the strife. All right, so he's in Egypt, and one day he sees his countrymen fighting. He sees them fighting, and he intervenes. He intervenes, and he ends up killing one of them. And so he runs away, and he runs to Midian. And some 40 years later, God comes to him and says, You're my man. You're the person I want to leave the Israelites. How many of us have a Moses questioning moment like that, where God has told us, there's a burning bush for you. There's something that I want you to do. You dream about it. You sit in your cubicle at work. You sit at home. You drive. You think about it. You go to seminars. You research. You do everything but start this business. Start this relationship. Start this ministry. Whatever it is that you're called to do, you do everything but because you feel inadequate. I want to let you know that God specializes in those people that feel inadequate because the only thing that he expected from Moses was to have a relationship and trust in God. You know, Moses says, but Moses protested, if I go to the people of Israel and tell them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say to the people of Israel, I am, I am has sent me to you. So all we need to do is believe in God. Who you think planted these burning bushes in our heart? Who do you think planted this ministry in me? You know, it's all God. It's been something that's been in me for a very, very, very long time. Who do you think planted that burning bush? And the second thing is that burning bush not only represents your calling, but it also represents the fact that when you have a relationship with Christ, these fires that come in your life won't burn and hurt you. Right? You may experience pain. Let's be realistic. You may experience heartache. They, it won't be easy. But when you have a relationship with God, this fire will, will not hurt you it will refine you when you fire put fire to something especially a sword it burns away the impurity so that, that sword can uh, uh, can function more effectively god is trying to refine you through these through your pain but if you don't have a relationship it'll just feel like torture it'll feel like bad luck you'll you'll feel like the world is against you you won't understand that god is trying to move you in the right direction so that made me think about my trip to the cvs yesterday
I went to CVS, saw this guy named Ulysses Elijah. I see him all the time. He's in a wheelchair, very, very nice man. And we're talking and we're just cutting the fool. And he says, you know, let me get my car. And I came home and I looked up his testimony, you know, because I asked him, I see him cycling all over the city in, in his wheelchair. And I saw him cycling. And I said, how do you get the discipline to do that every day? Because I see you almost every day when I'm on the way home. And he told me his background of being a thief. Well, turns out that uh, Ulysses was born to parents that couldn't take care of him. Okay, Mom was in a mental institution. Dad was not there. He was dyslexic, couldn't read, dropped out of school in seventh grade, and began to drink and then graduated to cocaine as an adult. And to fund his cocaine problem, he started breaking into houses. Well, one day he broke into this house on the sixth story, on the sixth floor, and the guy woke up, and it startled Ulysses to the point where he fell from the patio and broke his vertebrae, and he was numb for the rest of his life uh, from the bottom down. Numb. So you had someone that was emotionally numb and drinking and smoking, and now he's physically numb. So he's sitting in the hospital, and he meets these Two physical therapists that nurse him back to health, but also introduce him to racing. They introduce him to racing. And so they introduce him to this trainer named John Rupert. And John comes in and drives 45 minutes because he's convicted in his heart to help out Ulysses. And he trains Ulysses on how to never quit. He's like, you can't quit. And he dropped him off, you know, on Peachtree one day and said, get home. You don't get there, I won't come get you. And so at that moment, something was awakening Ulysses. He was pursuing his passion. And can I tell you, when I saw Ulysses yesterday, he told me that he came in second place in his race and he's going for first place in his race in Minnesota next month. And so that got me to thinking about the glory of God. You know, if God can take a thief like Ulysses in his past, and, and transform him into this world-class wheelchair racer. What can God do for you? But the story with Ulysses gets even better because as, as he was starting to train and get some, some good luck and, 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 and starting to place, he got into his relationship and it fell apart and Ulysses almost took his life. He took some Motrin pills, but this voice, he said, had, you know, had him reach out to someone and say, help me, I took these pills so that he wouldn't die. And lo and behold... In the hospital, who visits him? A pastor by the name of Vic Belton. And Vic Belton taught Ulysses the Bible. And Ulysses was able to become strong enough and, and understand character and understand that God wanted to use him through his inadequacies, through his failed character. So in, in, in ways, Ulysses was like Moses. Moses murdered someone. Ulysses was a thief, was not a good person to his own admission. And we're just like both of them. We're both, we're, we're, none of us are perfect. Christian means Christ-like. So if God can take someone like Moses, someone like Ulysses, he'll take you and me, all right? And he'll help us to go to the burning bush and, and pursue it. When you take action on your dreams, God cannot bless you being still unless he's told you to be still. If he's told you to move and you don't move, that's disobedience. He can't, he can't bless lack of faith. So whatever it is that you're pursuing, I want you to pursue it with reckless abandon. I want you to find it. I want you to seek it. I want you to go after it because all you need is faith and relationship with God. And if you don't have that, I encourage you to give your life to God. Go to a local church. This is a great time with Easter coming on Sunday when I'm recording this video, but this, this video should be timeless. This is a great time for you to find out more about the Lord. You know, really get into your word and be inspired. Because I can tell you, I can preach to you all day, I can, you know, but until you read this, you won't feel it for yourself. That's why it's hard for people to kind of explain why they follow God. It's a feeling. You have to kind of read and have a relationship to get it. Otherwise, it feels like we're putting pressure on you. That's why for someone like me, I don't even, I don't even pressure people because I know it's good. All right? So I'm Dr. Tart. I hope this was helpful. Pursue your dreams. Get over your inadequacies because that's what God specializes in, taking someone who's inadequate and making them whole through Christ. Take care and God bless.